Hello and welcome to Maiden Mother Matriarch with me, Louise Perry. I have got an intellectually meaty one for you today. My guest is Dr. Ben Lewis. He's a Leverhulme Early Career Fellow at the University of Leeds, where he specializes in German intellectual history. And what we spoke about today was his book on Oswald Spengler, who was uh, a German intellectual who was enormously influential in his own day, was then largely forgotten, but is seeing something of a renaissance, largely because some of his predictions for... Um, the shape of the 20th and 21st centuries have been largely vindicated. Uh, the reason I really want to talk to Ben about Spengler is because he is one of the most famous proponents of the civilizational cycles model of history, uh, as opposed to the progressive model of history, which we're all familiar with. He's also a fascinating figure because he seems to be he seems to be such a prophet, you know, whether or not that's true. This is what this is what we get into, including in the extended version of the episode where we spoke about Spengler's relevance to politics today and why uh, some people seem to find him to be such an attractive thinker. That extended version of the episode is available at my substack, louiseperry.substack.com, where, as always, there's the whole back catalogue. There's the MMM chat community where people have just started leaving dating ads, by the way, if you're in the market. And bonus episodes, as always. Enjoy. So, Ben, should we start by talking about Spengler's biography for people who haven't come across him at all before? Yeah, he's some kind of a, an interesting life in many respects. Son of a, a, a postal worker, kind of a, a petty bourgeois. Uh, background I suppose not a particularly happy family background it has to be said and uh, all sorts of conflicts within his, his family life and he, he's clearly somebody who from a very young age is is alienated from the world in in, in many respects and seems to make up for that by um, two things on the one hand reading through through books so he, he kind of escapes to the library on several occasions he wasn't a particularly good student uh, in either as a school student or as a university student and um but he would often disappear to the library for hours on end and and kind of uh, that was how he just kind of escape his his family any alienation and then he um on the other hand um would disappear into these worlds so he would kind of make up uh, entire empires draw ske sketches for kind of great Germany um even to the point of you know producing price lists and trade figures and all these kind wow. of things um so yes yeah, so a kind of a, a, an interesting uh childhood uh so not a particularly happy one um and then he essentially gets his abitur surpasses his a-levels he has the the one time in his life that he gets drunk uh is is is, is on that evening and they never again uh, I don't know exactly what happens. Um, we don't have the, <laughs> the evidence, but one can only assume it didn't go particularly well. And then he he uh, he becomes a university student at Halle, and and the the kind of um, uh, the the approach of, of of German students back then was to kind of travel around. So you would you would often just go around, and and your university choices really would be based upon who's lecturing where, etc. So you would just kind of travel from university to university. He spent a lot of time in Berlin, um, not a particularly successful student, as I said, uh, never really kind of settled. I think he started uh, to do uh, philosophy uh, and mathematics, but then uh, ended up writing his dissertation on Heraclitus. And then he, he then passed to be a teacher. Um, so he had to write a dissertation there, which we don't have, which is on um, the the eye within the animal kingdom, the role that uh, played by the, the eye in, in various animals. And that's a kind of feature of his uh, philosophy as well later on. So on the one hand, Heraclitus, things are constantly in flux, things are in constant change. And then on the other hand, the idea of the significance of the metaphysics of light and, uh, and, and depth perception and so on. And then he, he's trained successfully to become a teacher. And this story is quite revealing, I think, of, of Spengler as, as an individual, in a sense, a, 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 a pained and tortured individual in some ways. So the, the, what happens is he goes to give his first um, lesson in Lüneburg and has a panic attack in front of the mm. building. And... Um, and that's it's kind of re revealing and this isn't that it should be said this isn't the product of some kind of self-projection on his part 
uh, which many of these stories are to kind of emphasize his loneliness and his genius and his isolation, etc. Um, but it actually did happen. And um, the whole thing, the point I make about in my book about Schwenger's biography and his life in that sense is that it's very important to, in as far as it's possible, to get to the uh, the actual facts of what happened and not just believe Spengler's own uh, uh, interpretation or presentation of those mm. facts uh, in order to cultivate this image of himself as a, a you know this all seeing eye, this misunderstood Cassandra. In the, you know. I was very uh, amused by uh, the the but you mentioned that. Um... Spengler had all these busts commissioned of him, multiple busts commissioned of himself. Is that right? Where he's kind of glaring yeah, yeah. <laughs> wisely. Yeah, out. That's right. And, and again, e even a basic kind of internet search of Spengler, you will, you know, within seconds, you will find his his kind of grim visage, mm. um, you know, and and text optimism is cowardice, and you know all these these wonderful things. The 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 other quote that we talked about when. Uh, yeah, before this podcast about children, you know, when when cultiv I think when he says when cultivated or cultured people start to think about having children in terms of pros on pros and cons, that's when you know things that the turning point has been reached. Mm. And again, this grim. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, uh, extremely quotable. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So so again, so it's so it's a complicated life. And I say 1880 to 1936. So he he lives through significant uh, historical change as well in. In Germany and, and and within Europe and beyond, and uh, and in that sense, his life is 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 quite revealing and important because so much happens within the space of that of of, of those uh, fifty six years, um, and uh, in, that finds reflection in his own life and times and his intellectual interests, etc., and, and his writings. And that's what really what I try to do is to bring back all of this kind of deeply metaphysical, often convoluted. A historical writing and understanding and try and root it within his times but not simply reduce it to those times either thank you so much for watching that episode of men mother matriarch and for all of your support it means an enormous amount for the growth of the show if you want to hear bonus content an extra 20 30 minutes of conversation with the guest maybe a little bit more personal a little bit less filtered then you can go to my substack at louiseperry.substack.com where you can sign up for extended episodes and also bonus episodes and you can also access our chat community you can also support the show by subscribing on youtube or subscribing wherever you get your podcasts and rating and reviewing on apple podcasts is also really great for encouraging other people to give the show a try please also spread the word tell people that you know who you think might like it to give it to give it a shot um, the word of mouth effect is really valuable. So we'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening, watching and supporting what we're doing. Mm -hmm.